there's a big element of home chem that we haven't talked about yet. The relationship of predator and prey seems straightforward at first. Stay with me for a minute. Microscopic animals are afraid of bigger animals who are running away from huge animals with lots of teeth, and even they are afraid of humans. So what are we most afraid of? Ironically, it's the microscopic bugs again, and the cycle continues. Lately, a lot of people have been fixated on cleaning and sanitizing to fight the microbes. So here is what the scientists from Home Chem have learned about these tiniest, spookiest neighbors of ours. We're all afraid yes. of bacteria oh, and viruses started. and bugs, and, and yet we rely on them. There seems to be this hatred against microbes because we know they can make us sick, right? If you have the flu or a cold, that's probably caused by, by a virus or a bacteria, so then people end up hating those. But I think it's important to remember that our bodies are a massive, massive colony of microbes. I like to think of myself as a planet and the inhabitants are all the microbes that are on me and in me, right? The microbes are all the way down your digestive system. They we help really you digest the food. should refer to each other in the plural, not in the singular. Exactly. It's us, all billions of us right now <laughs> talking to you. <laughs> So right now in our house, we have a group from the University of San Diego doing microbial swabs. That means that they're going through all of the surface in the house. They're going through doorknobs and cabinetry and the floors and the chairs and every surface in the bathroom, the kitchen, the living space. And they're swabbing them with a little bit of ethanol and cotton. And they're going to bring that material back to their lab. And then they're going to do two things. They're going to do genome sequencing so they can tell us what the microbiome in those surfaces in the house is. And they're also going to be looking at the microbial metabolites. So what kind of uh, chemical compounds are being produced by the microbes? Because we're not the only residents in our house. There are microbes everywhere, right? And they participate in their chemistry as well. The study exactly like this has never been done before. It hasn't been done in a living environment like this. For the whole months, people have been living here, they've been cooking. Um, doing the uh, normal chores and we're doing this in the beginning uh, of the study when nobody has ever lived in the house and then uh, we're sampling after everything has been done and so we want to compare uh, how the microbes and chemicals are changing over time. Microbes outside of us are also really really important. Absolutely. So bread it rises because of the yeast. Those are mm -hmm. microbes. And yogurt. They, exactly. And what those microbes do in my bread mix is they poop and fart and <laughs> belch, and you get all that CO2 coming out, and that's what causes the bread to rise in the oven. So those microbes are landing on your little sourdough starter and helping your bread and actually growing. They grow really, and really rise. like the flour. But they're also coming along with other microbes, and they're all going to be sitting on those surfaces of the walls inside. Mm -hmm. And they're, they do chemistry in my bread mix. They do chemistry on the walls. It just kind of irks me when I see all these consumer products out in the market and they're all antimicrobial. You wanna just kill the, the bugs everywhere, right? Uh, even the hand soap is full of all these chemical compounds that are made to kill the bacteria from your hands. And even door handles have nanoparticles just to make them antimicrobial. Silver nanoparticles apply to everything from fabrics to sprays to little wipes and keyboards. Do you know? Yeah. There are antimicrobial keyboards now. Killing microbes and cleaning your hands are, are two very, very different things. There's a fundamental understanding about why we wash our hands. Uh, we're not trying to just kill all the bacteria. What we're trying to do is remove bacteria that we maybe acquired from shaking somebody else's hand and we don't want on ours, or removing molecules that are potentially toxic from our hands. So you can use regular soap, which is just, you know, you have the soap and the water, and the soap is gonna get rid of all of the fat and the oils in your hands. It's gonna grab all of those. And, and you're gonna move your hands around, and that's gonna you're getting slough rid of off everything. Those, yeah. those surface particles and some microbes into yeah. the running water. So physically, you're getting rid of all of the dirt in your hands along with the microbes in your hands. So when you use Perel on your hands, the idea is that there's alcohol in the Perel that will kill the bacteria. 
And what I didn't like about that is that I was imagining, well, now I just have that bacteria on my hands. And, and two of those are not going to cause disease anymore, but I'd rather just use water and, and wash it all away. You haven't removed any, any of the dirt from and your you, hands. And you've only killed some microbes, not even necessarily all of them, uh, but all those other molecules that were on your hands that might actually be the ones that you don't want to ingest, mm -hmm. those They're are still there. still there. That truly has, you know, grossed me out. <laughs> I mean, the idea of just putting Perel and then, you know, eating. <laughs> also because I don't want to eat the Perel. There's more than just alcohol in there. You can smell it, right? So it's kind of similar as pasteurizing milk, right? We're worried about bacteria in the milk, so we pasteurize the milk, but the bacteria are still in there. They're just dead, so they won't harm us anymore, but we'll still drink the dead bacteria when we drink the milk. <laughs>